Using the filter function in Google Sheets can help you get a subset of data. So for example, if I'm looking at our master schedule and I want to see all teachers who have a planning period in period one, all who have planning for period two, etc., and that's all I want to see in my sheet, I want to use the filter function. You could use the filter tools in Gmail, but that'll only show you one column at a time. So if I filter column D by using the filter function, and I filter it out just to see the plan period, now I can only see period one plan. I can't next to that see who has planning in period two. So to do that, I'm going to use the filter function to make it look a little bit more like this. Let's take a look at that function. In cell B2, I start with the equal sign as I do for any function that I write, and filter is the function that I use. I want to filter out from the sheet alpha anything in column B that contains the word plan. And that's what's up here in A1. Now, you don't have to know how to use this function when you take the level two test, but you will see questions about it. So know that when you wanna filter data based on certain criteria, this filter function will be really nice. What it's doing is looking at the alpha sheet, it's looking at column B, which if you take a look over here, that's where we have the teacher names. And then it's looking at D. And it's trying to find where column D, which is what they have first period, equals A1. And in this sheet, A1 says plan. It's looking for this word. Then it's going to return the result of what is in A2. So it's going to return the name of the teacher. Then I need to repeat that filter for period two. So I do the exact same thing, but this time, instead of looking at column D, we're gonna look at column F, because that's where we have second period. And then we continue that. In for a third period, we're gonna look at column G. For a fourth period, we look at column H, etc. And this will return the results of the teachers who have a planning period during that time. We do have this broken down into first and second semester. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is conditional formatting. Conditional formatting will automatically color code or format your cells based on the criteria that you tell it. So here I already have some conditional formatting. If a cell appears with an R in it, it'll be the color red. If it appears with a Y, it'll be the color yellow. And if it appears with a G, it'll be the color green. But I would also like those numbers beside to match the same color. So let's go ahead and set some conditional formatting rules. I'm going to select the data. You could select the entire column if you would like and go up to format. Here we go down to conditional formatting. And then we need to tell it what our conditions are. So for the column G, I want if it is if the cell is less than or equal to the number 13, then I would like the cell to be red. So I click Done. Then I can add another rule. We're looking at the same column. Let's do if cell is between the numbers 14, let's actually do 13 and 20, then we want those cells to be yellow. Then finally, let's add another rule for green. And that would be if the cell is greater than 19, then we're gonna change it to green. Now, no matter what I put in these cells, if it's between those numbers, it's automatically gonna format to those colors for me.
You can set as many conditional formatting rules as you would like, and notice that you have lots of options here. You can do a color scale, so you can have it do a scale based on the value earned, or look at all of the different options. You can use custom formulas, you can do specific text, you can do numbers or dates, anything that meets the data that you are looking at.